be ready 10 seconds to go start all wages or salary including wages payable for time or piece work and salary earned wholly or in part by way of commission of any workman in respect of services rendered to the company and any compensation payable to any workman under any of the provisions of the industrial disputes act 1947 to all accrued holiday remuneration becoming payable to any workman or in the case of his death to any other person in his right on the termination of his employment before or by the effect of the winding up order or resolution 3 unless the company is being wound up voluntarily merely for the purposes of reconstruction or of amalgamation with another company or unless the company has at the commencement of the winding up under such a contract with insurers as is mentioned in section 14 of the workmen's compensation act 1923 rights capable of being transferred to and vested in the workman all amounts due in respect of any compensation or liability for compensation under the said act in respect of the death or disablement of any workman of the company for all sums due to any workman from a provident fund a pension fund a gratuity fund or any other fund for the welfare of the workmen maintained by the company five workmen's portion in relation to the security of any secured creditor of a company means the amount which bears to the value of the security the same proportion as the amount of the workmen's dues bears to the aggregate of bracket a the amount of workmen's dues and bracket b the amounts of the debts due to the secured creditors as per section 447 of the companies act an order for winding up of a company operates in favor of all the creditors as if it had been made on a joint petition of a creditor all creditors are treated as petitioning creditors section 456 of the companies act requires a provisional liquidator or a liquidator as the case may be to take all properties and action claims to which the company is or appears to be entitled into his custody or under his control sub section bracket 1a to section 456 of the 
कंपनीज एक्ट एंटाइटल्स द लिक्विडेटर टू राइट और रिक्वेस्ट टू द चीफ प्रेजिडेंसी मैजिस्ट्रेट विद इन हूज जूरिस्डिक्शन सच प्रॉपर्टी इफेक्ट्स और एक्शनेबल क्लेम्स आर सब सेक्शन ब्रैकेट वन बी टू सेक्शन फोर फिफ्टी सिक्स ऑफ द कंपनीज एक्ट परमिट्स द चीफ प्रेजिडेंसी मैजिस्ट्रेट और द डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैजिस्ट्रेट टू टेक सच स्टेप्स और यूज सच फोर्स एज इन हिज ओपिनियन मे बी नेसेसरी सेक्शन 468 ऑफ द कंपनीज एक्ट परमिट्स द ट्रिब्यूनल और कोर्ट टू डायरेक्ट एनी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटरी ट्रस्टी रिसीवर बैंकर एजेंट ऑफिसर और अदर एम्प्लॉ ऑफ द कंपनी टू पे डिलीवर सरेंडर और ट्रांसफर फोर्थ विद और विद इन सच टाइम एज डिरेक्टेड टू द लिक्विडेटर एनी मनी प्रॉपर्टी और बुक्स एंड पेपर्स इन हिज कस्टडी एंड कंट्रोल टू विच द कंपनी इज प्राइमा फेसी एंटाइटल्ड सेक्शंस फाइव ट्वेंटी एट टू फाइव थर्टी ऑफ द कंपनीज एक्ट फॉल अंडर चैप्टर फिफ्थ provisions applicable to every mode of winding up under the subheading proof and ranking of claims section 528 of the companies act states that the debts of all descriptions including the debts payable on contingency and claims against the company present or future ascertained or sounding only in damages shall be admissible to proof against the company on a just estimate being made of such debts as far as possible section 456 of the companies act inter alia provides that all the property and effects of the company shall be deemed to be in the custody of the tribunal or court as from the date of the order for the winding up of the company the objective of giving jurisdiction to the company court or tribunal during the process of liquidation of the company is twofold first to ensure that the assets of a company in liquidation are amassed and possessed to prevent a scramble and dissipation of the assets of an insolvent company secondly the company court or tribunal is entrusted with the paying of debts from the sale proceeds of the assets so assimilated according to the waterfall mechanism provided for and specified under sections 529 529a and 530 of the companies act accordingly and with this objective section 529a of the companies act refers to the doctrine of pari passu in the proviso to sub section bracket 1 to section 529 with reference to the claims inter se the workmen and the secured creditors even otherwise on a conspectus 
of these sections the principle applicable and underlying these provisions is to stop alienation and preserve the assets on the date of the bankruptcy which date in some cases can relate back to the date of filing of the winding up petition as in case of execution of a decree this preservation is with a view to ensure the division and application of the assets of the company stop 